Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Shutter Slaughterhouse. I'm Daniel. And uh, yes, I gotta make a quick little announcement real quick before we get into the show. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday on the uh, Horror Movie Review, and I'm just, you know, mentioning all the shows right now. Uh, I don't think I've ever mentioned this part on the show, though, on this particular show. But uh, me and my girlfriend are expecting our first child. Uh, Adrian Michael Richardson is uh, due to be here on November 4th, and we are super excited. Because uh, I get to have a free actor in my upcoming movies. Because he don't have a choice. Anyways, uh, no, no. Uh, we're just, you know, super thrilled and everything. Uh, however, you know... As you know, it's like, you know, on this channel alone, I produce four shows every week and review upwards to, like, six to seven movies at any given time, you know. And it's clearly, there's no question about it, we're going to have to scale back tremendously. Um, and I really don't know, what, you know, I've never been a father before. It's my very, you know, first child. And so I have no idea what to expect on that end of it. But uh, also, on the other side, it's like, well, I know it clearly can't, you know, keep this up, you know, that long. Uh, so I decided to be really kind of uh, totally scaled back. I don't want to get rid of it completely. I do realize there are YouTubers out there who have children who still continue doing it. And uh, and I, I want to keep going as well. But once again, I just know that I won't be able to just start pumping them out like I was. Uh, now, all the other shows I've scaled back completely to where it's going to be one show a month probably on, uh, you know, the Horror Movie Review or TPS TV or etc. Uh, with this one, I still want to continue this weekly because I do watch a lot of Shudder. And I feel like, you know, those late night feedings, I'll probably be watching Shudder. So it just feels like this is a show that I'm probably going to uh, keep going with it. However, if you guys have been watching for the past, you know, two or three weeks, I've been doing uh, multiple uh, reviews, up to like four reviews in a week. And that's probably going to get dropped back to about one or so. One or two. I won't. I won't say completely just one. But you know, I would always say you don't expect to <laughs> every week. But you know, for the most part, I'm gonna keep it kind of you know low key or whatever. Uh, so we're gonna do it this week. We're gonna see you know how it's gonna go, and uh, we'll just kind of go from there. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Not 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 in the channel, not in the show. Uh, just kind of scaling it back. But this way, you know, uh, we'll still do the review. And I'll, I'll make it a little bit more in depth on these reviews instead of going mini reviews like I was before. But uh, yeah, so let's get started this week. We're looking at the uh, Shutter uh, exclusive or original. Sorry, it's an original, not exclusive. It's an original. Uh, the Shutter original uh, series, Cursed Films. Cursed Films is a, a five-part uh, documentary series uh, that explores the urban legends and myths behind uh, proposed uh, cursed film sets and movies in general. Uh, so I watched this be way before I even started the show. I was going to watch this when it first came out. It sounded interesting, uh, and I watched the first episode. The first episode was the, the Exorcist, and honestly, I don't know why it just didn't grab me. I, I just didn't care. I was just like, Ugh, whatever. I don't, I don't know. All the stuff they were mentioning, I kind of already knew. There was really no fresh insight into any of it, and then like midway through, they start like talking to people who are like they really believe in it, I guess, and then they kind of go on these exorcisms themselves, and just kind of like I don't know. It seemed kind of hokey, and so I just kind of ended it. I was done. Finished. Then I started doing the show, and I was like, well, maybe I should go back and give it another chance. I mean, there's only five episodes. I was like, you know, and they're all, you know, pretty short. They're about a half hour piece. So I was like, let me check out the next one. And so the second one was uh, The Omen, which is one of my favorite movies. Uh, so much so that I got the tattoo on the side of my head right here. And uh, watched it, and still knew everything they were talking about, but it was a little more in-depth. There's a couple things I didn't know, a couple details I, you know, was, I didn't know about. And so, really liked it a little bit better. So the next movie, or the next one was uh, Poltergeist. Uh, and that one, now that's a film, I'll be honest with you, and this is where I'm always on the outside of the horror community. I was never big on Poltergeist. I mean, I don't know. I watched it when I was younger, too. I just, I don't know, wasn't big on it. I didn't think it was scary. Just thought it was, I don't know, it was just too clean and nice. I don't, I, don't know. I wasn't big on it. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get into it. The, the killer clown didn't scare me, I'm sorry. Uh, anyways, uh, but this one, you know, this was one where it, the, the, the show kind of took a turn, a shift, and it gets a little kind of hard to watch when you hear these directors, because I mean, that's the thing, I think as an audience, or just, you know, people in general, like, you know, whenever any kind of tragedy happens that you have no connection to, and I'm not saying you're insensitive to it, you clearly get the gravity of the whole thing, but you do kind of just talk about it like it's another show or something. You know, you're just like, oh yeah, you know, mass shootings 
happens all the time, unfortunately, and it's bad. But you don't have no connection because you don't know anybody who's involved in or anything like that. And I feel like when we talk about cursed films or movies that are supposed to be cursed or whatever and the tragedies that happen, you, you just kind of forget, like, these are real people with, you know, friends and family who were left behind. And this is the first one where I'm starting to see that, I guess. Because I, I saw documentaries on it before, and it just seemed like it was more, I don't know, no one got that emotional about it. It was very, everybody's kind of talking about cold. It's like, well, here are the facts, you know. The young girl who played Carol Ann, she had a, you know, rare stomach disease that was misdiagnosed or whatever, and, you know, she died. And it's just like, that's how they present it, you know. And they, they play the sad music, but it's just like, uh. But here you, you talk to the director of part three, and it's just, you can see the hurt in his eyes, and you're just like, God damn. And, uh, you know, one of the guys, I think the guy was a special effects guy, and they were talking about the other girl, I forget her name. Shit. The girl played the older sister. You know, she was like uh, strangled shortly after part one, and he's just like, you know, fuck the curse. Like, there's no curse. These are people's lives. And I don't know, man. It, it, it kind of hit me. You know, it's like shit. So the next one was uh, the crow, and again, you're hearing, you know, and there's a scene where one of the producers, like midway through, he just stops. He's just like, I don't want to talk about the hospital experience when I took him to the hospital or whatever when I took the hospital randomly and it really was just like wow like I mean and we don't think about this I mean I think for the most part you hear the end so uh last night I wrapped up the final one which um oh crap oh Twilight Zone the movie and that one was probably another thing too like there was never per se a curse on that film like with all the other ones there were multiple incidents that happened throughout filming or whatever but there's only one big one, but man, they it's a, it's a big one, and it really was just like, and you, you, the special effects guy, or the guy who was in charge of the explosions or whatever, he was, it was rough seeing him relive this and talk, and it was just like, god damn, and it was, yeah, it, 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 it's a powerful one, it, they definitely ended it on a big note, like, I, I, maybe it's meant to do that way, like I said, the first two didn't really seem like they had a whole lot of emotional core to them, it was just kind of like, hey, you know, it's a curse and everything, but then as a Episodes progressed, it does get a little bit more emotional and a little bit, you know. And so, anyways, um, I, I really liked it. Uh, I didn't know the details uh, of the uh, Twilight Zone one hardly at all. I read a blurb on IMDb, but I never really looked into it. Um, the Crow, I kind of I knew all of that. But I didn't. There's some stuff I didn't know about that. Like I had no idea. Like the whole Skull Cowboy. A uh, bit was cut out, and they had to, or trim it out, and then they had to, you know, redo that. I didn't know any of that. Um, and yeah, but like I said, with the extras and the old men, for the most part, I knew all that. And then Poltergeist, I knew it all. But it was just seeing it through, I guess, the eyes of people who were there made it a little more impactful, I guess. Uh, so, anyways, uh, the Shutter audience have, you know, awarded this four out of five skulls, and I gotta agree. Uh, I don't know if there's gonna be any more. I know there's a few other films out there that, you know, Suppose they have a curse to them. It'll be interesting to see if they, you know, tackle any more, or if this is just a one and done. But uh, no, I, I really enjoyed it. I would say four out of five. Uh, if it wasn't for the first episode, kind of sucking a bag of dicks, I would probably give it a five out of five. But uh, four out of five, it seems pretty, pretty apt. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a documentary series, but they're only like a half hour uh, long a piece. And uh, if it's something you're into, I would highly recommend it. So there you guys have it, guys. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week. Till next time. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Hi. Thank you for watching that video. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to our channel. All that good stuff you do right here on YouTube, go ahead and do it. Uh, check out our other videos. Go to our playlist. We've got episodes of TPS TV, Journey Through the Dark Side. We've got a new show coming out, The Horror Movie Review with Daniel Richardson. This guy. Uh, and, of course, uh, our short film, Entropy. You can find all that and more right here on YouTube. And then check out, yeah, look at that. All of our uh, social media right there. Uh, and we don't just, you know, copy and paste like the same post and put it on all. No, that's ridiculous. Three different platforms, three different posts. I mean, the behind the scenes stuff you see on Twitter will not be the same stuff you see on Instagram. So there you go, right there. So be sure to get on, give us a follow and a like on all that right there. Keep up to date. Uh, have you seen Unsequel Acts yet? No, come on. Pick you up the DVD right now. Link's over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's only $7. $3 shipping and handling. Uh, and, of course, if you've already seen it and you haven't seen the uh, Public Domain Dungeon yet, boom, $5 DVD right there. So, 5 S&P as well. Or, sorry, 3 S&P. 
as well. Uh, so there you go. Do that. And if you got the spare change, you want to hit us up, you know, donate a little bit over here to TPS Productions. Our Patreon is right there. Oh, yeah. So that's all we. Oh, my God. Sorry. I'm very. I'm getting fired, ain't I? God, that's all we got. Thank you for watching.